Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I got a couple bins that I'd like to check in on. But here in the foreground you can see I've got this fan operating. The reason for the fan is to try to move air across the top of the bins. As you can see the bins are all uncovered. There's no coverings, not even paper. And that's because I've got a little bit of a moisture situation going on in a lot of my bins. So I'm trying to see if I can let the bins air out a little bit and dry so that uh, so that the material in the bins can become just a little bit more manageable. And it's been three days now, so I don't know exactly how it's coming along. I think some people have suggested that it could take weeks of, you know, a fan blowing over their material before they saw any sort of results. So I'm not sure if three days of the fan blowing over the over the bins is enough time to expect to see a change, but uh, but I guess we'll see. Only one of my bins needs to be fed, and that's the newest of my bins, which is down there on the ground, and it's actually one of the bins that still has a lid on it, or a cover on it. And the other two bins that we're checking in on are actually in a starving mode right now. It's been two weeks since they were last fed, and the idea there was to let the let the worms break down whatever residual food there still is in the bin so that at some point in the near future I could try to kick off a migration of the worms out of the material but first I'd like the material to become a little bit less hospitable in terms of it having no more food or bedding or anything left so that when I set up a new feeding zone and some new bedding for them that they'll be motivated to move over into it. So I'm going to move this fan aside and get these bins up onto the bench so we can get to work. All right, we're starting with the newest of my bins, which is um, it's kind of funny because all the bins were started on the 22nd of their respective months. So this newest bin here started on the uh, 22nd of June is now 35 days old. That's five weeks, and I think there've been a couple feedings, but not much. The one thing that there is a lot of though in here is a lot of worms. I believe our estimates are something in the neighborhood of 5,000 worms were placed into this bin. So you have to guess that it's probably a very, very hungry bin with that many mouths to feed. So I've got a pretty generous feeding set aside for them here. All right. These are red wiggler worms. They're a fairly small breed of worm, but they're one of the best for composting. They're pretty flexible in terms of their tolerance for different temperatures. They're pretty calm in terms of just staying in the bin and not tending to wander. They multiply quickly. Basically, they're just a great worm to have for composting. So now it's been a week since we last fed this bin. And since then, you can see a fair number of castings have been deposited out here on the top surface. You saw when I removed it, that top covering, that piece of cardboard was lined with plastic. And that really is one of the last bins of mine that have plastic um, covering it. All the other bins are attempting to shed moisture through evaporation. But here I'm still promoting the recirculation and capture of the moisture in the bin, rather than just letting it evaporate into the air. But since it's been very humid lately, I'm keeping a close eye on this just to see if at some point we might want to reverse that thinking and allow for a little bit more evaporation in this bin than there has been. A number of different pieces of cardboard were placed on top here. It's kind of hard to see them. <laughs> you saw there was also a coffee filter there. But underneath all these castings, I can't really tell what's here. At this point, anything else we find will just be bedding. I'm feeling different things here that I know are food, like right here. This is a uh, a mango seed. My latest strategy for mango seeds has been not to go overboard and go crazy prepping them as a food item for the worms. But if you just throw them in without doing any prep work, it'll sit there in your bin for months and months without changing. So you might notice there's a couple hot spots. All I did was I took my knife and punctured each of these in a couple different locations just to allow the worms to get access to the inside of it. This is really sort of a hard outer husk and I believe the actual seed of the mango is within the heavy duty 
fiber husk. But without the worms and the mic microscopic life forms within the bin working it down to this point, I don't think I'd be able to flex it this way. So I believe that that's adequate rather than going overboard and trying to prep it by hacking it in half, which I've, I've done other times as well, and that certainly helps too. But that's a little bit more effort. So rather than going to all that extra work, I just figured I'd start prepping these with a couple puncture holes to see if that helps them speed up the breakdown process. This mango seed really doesn't show any signs of infiltration yet, but I have to assume that, yeah, that I've punctured it. I can see the hole right there. So now I'm just starting to pull back some material here to get a sense of how things are doing in this bin, mainly from a moisture perspective. That's what I'm most interested in, I think. I think as we find different types of food items, we'll check them out. And this here is actually a, uh, a mango seed that I, <laughs> it's a lot of mango seeds, right? This is one that I did actually break in half or cut in half. And you can see it's starting to develop this real fibrous sort of texture as it breaks down. You can see worms in and out of it big time. So you can tell they really like this as a food item as long as they can get at the insides of it. So I don't know. We'll see. For now I'm just going to see if I can go with sort of a minimal approach of simply puncturing the husk of it to give them access. Assuming that that is adequate. But if I start to see that they're taking way longer than expected, then I'll maybe start implementing extra measures. Maybe go back to hacking them in half. Yet another one. Quite a few of them in here. And I believe that the reason we're seeing a number of them in here is because I think we had actually extracted the food items out of a couple of our bins and moved it over here uh, to try to help those other bins get to the finish line a little bit more quickly. This is interesting. Every time you see a big glob of worms like this all piled together, you have to assume there's something really yummy that they're working on there. Usually by the time you get to that point, it's just a ball of goo and you can't really tell what it is that they're eating. It would have been nice to see it, whatever it was. So I'm taking all of these really slow composting harder items as, as I find them and stacking them up over here against the wall. These are avocado pits, which are super hard oops items that's pretty interesting it just sort of split in half in my hands and it is actually a little bit softer now down the middle that's pretty cool so maybe there is some hope i was just thinking that a, uh, a half of an avocado seed like this one right here was going to go nowhere fast just because i didn't really observe much progress on it but on that one I could already see that it's actually getting soft in the middle and that one is too as a matter of fact so it's pretty cool every now and then as I'm moving stuff around here you can certainly see that there's a fair number of worms in here like I said this one's a pretty heavy heavy populated bin there's another avocado pit I wonder if it'll separate I'm not in a big hurry to move things along. I'm just, you know, putting things like that into the bin to see how long they take. Not in any scientific way, so I'm not measuring the time per se. But it was just a buddy of mine gave me a handful of these and he says, hey, put these in your bin. Let's see what happens. That was months ago. <laughs> so a lot of these, um, yeah, most of these pits have probably come over from other locations. Although a couple of them, I believe, were placed in here by me as part of their feedings not too long ago but this is so cool how do you like that I mean there's definitely some food bits in here and some castings and whatever a couple chunks of bedding but it's more or less just a huge mound of worms in my hand here there too they must have really been digging something that was right there and that was really the feeding zone if you you know if you must know <laughs> so I cheated that's not, that's not indicative of the entire population of the bin. Here we have a, uh, a stripped out avocado. I believe it was placed in here with a whole bunch of the fleshy material still in there for them to eat. 
but they've clearly stripped it out considerably. This is also some sort of a seed or a pit, but I don't know what it is. I keep running into that and I don't know what it is, to tell you the truth. So we've been kind of exploring here. We did a pretty good job looking around on this side and picking out some of the larger food items to see how they're progressing. Stacking them all up. But I'm also attempting to leave myself a pretty good size gap down the middle here so that I can add this fairly generous portion of food that I bought down here to give them today. But I know that since this is such a heavily populated bin, I'm just using this as an opportunity to really see them, you know, see, see what a bin with 5,000 worms in it looks like. And there again, that's just a, an estimate based on having weighed or estimated each um, introduction of worms into this bin. But I, I, I do I do trust that it is a fairly accurate estimate. So I'm just going to take another little peek over here before we drop the food in. And the bottom line is that this bin is just super, super quick in terms of breaking down the contents. Because I mean over here on the edge you would think that you'd find some bedding, but I don't really see any. It's pretty much all, it's all just castings and, and worms. Another slow item, another uh, experimental slow composting item. It's a pumpkin stem. And a couple other bits and pieces of food that we're finding here and there as we go along. So I think we're... Um, I think we're going to have to definitely keep tabs on this bin. Waiting any longer than a week is probably not the best idea. Obviously they've got other food items here, all kinds of stuff that they can certainly enjoy and dig into if the easy to eat stuff that I give them on a regular basis runs out. And then there's always the bedding in the bin too that they can eat. But with a bin that's populated this heavily, it definitely is a good idea to make sure that it doesn't run out of food. I got a feeling it's going to be a uh, it's going to be pretty quick to the finish line too in terms of being ready to harvest soon. It'll receive generous feedings. It'll burn through those generous feedings quickly and the material will stack up fast. So it will be interesting to see how quick this thing actually ends up breaking all the food down that they get. And chances are a lot of these things will outlive the life of the bin. <laughs> chances are when it comes time to migrate the worms into a new environment that they'll probably just have all that old stuff go with them when the time comes. So you can see I've really made a huge opening down here. So I've got some, um, got some cardboard I'm going to lay in there as the bedding. And I guess just, you know, since I was curious about the moisture level, I guess I'll comment on it here as long as it was a topic of consideration. I think the moisture level is actually quite good in here. And I'm not sure why, um, with all the humidity and with the coverings, there's really been no chance for any of the moisture in this bin to escape. So I'm kind of glad to see that we're still in pretty good balance, in a state of pretty good equilibrium in terms of moisture not being over overly wet in here so I'm just taking some of these older food items the uh, slow composting items we stumbled on while examining the bin we're just going to throw them in down at the bottom I think I've got them all for the most part seems that way Let's see if we could just make a little bit more room over on this edge too Move some of this cardboard around and some of the food around, spread it out. We'll just use the entire width of the container to drop in the food that they're getting here. So it is a fairly generous portion that they're getting. So let's see what they're getting today. All right, I think we got it all. So you can see there's an entire frozen banana in here. This is a whole bunch of cantaloupe rinds. 
this lettuce in here is all gone bad. I'm not sure what these are. If they're not peaches, right? They're maybe nectarines. I'm not sure. I think peaches are the ones with the fuzzy outside. These have the smooth outside. It's a large number of yummy sweet things. Bananas, nectarines, and cantaloupe. And just a little bit of lettuce thrown in for good measure. That's probably what they're going to like the most because it's already kind of rotting away and brown and nasty. So that might end up being the food that they favor the most. So we shall see. And I think we've got room in here to drop in a little bit of leafy matter on top too. Once again as a bedding source. Because for that much food it does make good sense to include a, a balance of not only the food being kind of rich in nitrogen to throw in a lot of additional carbon to go hand in hand with that too. And I guess any other bedding sort of materials that we can see out here on the surface we'll throw them down in there too as long as we're at it. These are just little bits of cardboard I'm seeing here and there. I think they're cardboard. But if that stuff floats around up higher it doesn't matter either because it's all over the place. It'll all eventually get taken care of by the worms. So I'm going to start spreading our material out over the feeding zone here to cover up. And I like the flakiness of the material and I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that it's still kind of mixed with a bunch of bedding you know if you if you look at any of this stuff there are chunks of leaves and cardboard and whatnot scattered throughout it if there were nothing but castings I think it might be a little bit damp and then I would probably have it uncovered and allowing for the air to circulate over this one as well but for now I think I'll just stick to keeping it covered as it's been hopefully I don't send it off in the wrong direction and make it overly damp in here so I will definitely be keeping an eye on it to, to see if it does start approaching that situation. And if it does, then I'll start reducing the coverings, starting with the plastic, which does the most to help recirculate the moisture in here. So now here are some of this older cardboard stuff that was placed in here. I believe it was placed in here during one of the last feedings. And that feeding was really a, a relocation of food from other bins I believe if I remember correctly. So not only was I relocating worms from their old environment I was also bringing along a lot of the food that they were still working on and this cardboard and a lot of those mango pits I believe a lot of that all came along as part of the populating of this bin. So that was fun. Pretty cool looking through a bin which which has this many worms in it because it is crazy to see see how they're doing away with the food that they've received so I'm covering back up now so we can let these little guys get back to work and now the other two bins we're doing simply a check-in on so let me get the next one out here on the bench so like I said 22nd April 22nd in this case and in this case this bin has been um, sort of sitting at an angle with this side propped up to try to allow any moisture that's in the bin to come down and collect over on this edge and I believe that's why we're seeing an, uh, a larger presence of castings right here on the surface because the material was probably a little bit more damp a little bit more favorable for the worms they love damp material so I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see a number of worms just hanging out down here in this damp stuff. So like I said earlier, it's been two weeks now since this bin was last fed. And it wasn't just a straight up feeding. At that point I had actually set up its feeding as a migration. My attempt at that point was to start moving the worms out of the material into one of the edges 
So maybe it was this side of the bin that had been fed, trying to move the, the worms over into that side. And, uh, and it seemed to me like it was sort of a premature action to take. Because when I went through looking through the material, you know, I was finding all kinds of scattered bits of leafy material and bedding and little scraps of food here and there. And it just seemed like, you know, regardless of how tempting the migration feeding zone was that I had set up to try to lure the worms out of the material, it seemed to me like the material throughout the bin was still just so richly scattered with food bits and moisture that there was very little reason for the worms to want to move out of the material. So I, uh, I sort of reversed course on that and I dismantled that horizontal migration feeding zone that had been present in this bin for a few days and I, uh, I scattered that food around the top of the bin just so I could treat whatever that food was as maybe their final feeding. I didn't want to extract it and remove it. I just figured I would keep it in there and just treat it as their final feeding, which had at one point been set up as a horizontal migration feeding, but later got scattered throughout the bin just to facilitate quick consumption of it. And I, I you know, I don't really see any signs of that food. Like I said, it was just scattered across the top for the most part. And as I'm tilling up the material here, if there were any larger chunks of that remaining, I'm sure we would see it. So luckily the majority of that food is gone now. But all these other things that you see in the material as I stir it around, you know, stuff like these little stems of leaves, um, other little bits of remaining cardboard, little chunks of bedding that was in here. This is all stuff that still needs to be broken down as far as I'm concerned. And only after it's been broken down will I be able to really consider this as a, uh, a tub of castings only. And I believe at that point we'll really be able to expect a good swift migration of the worms seeking a, uh, a source of food after what they've gotten here has been depleted. You can see there's a pretty good population of worms in here. And as I stir it around, I'm finding more damp material at the bottom, which I'm attempting to bring up to the top. I'm also finding bits and pieces of, you know, leafy material, little sticks and stems and whatnot. I'm not sure if it's resting on the bottom, but I always figure that if it's resting somewhere within the material, it's got a greater chance of being consumed rather than if it's just sitting on the bottom of the bin. So I, I've got multiple reasons for wanting to stir the material around like this, not least of which is to get it airy, aired out and ventilated, but also to move some of the more dry material that has had a chance to evaporate and dry on the surface down within the wet material to try to help dry it off a bit but also to help agitate any of the food items and food edible materials that are in the material. You know, any of the edible materials that are still in the bin, get them sort of out into the, uh, into the material. Get it scattered out throughout the bin so that it's more easy to access and consume. But I definitely like that the material is getting a little bit less muddy, a little bit more flaky. And I think with this many worms, I think we're going to have a pretty good setup in here within a couple weeks. Or maybe less, we'll see. But as long as I, you know, stir through here and I continue to find little sticks and stems, I'm going to assume that they've still got food to eat and that they've still got some work to do. But I'll still come in here and I'll still try to stir up the material and try to equalize the moisture by moving the more dry stuff down and the damp stuff up. Try to take any sort of residual food scraps and make sure that they're suspended throughout the material in the bin for easier access, greater likelihood of being broken down and consumed. 
And I believe naturally I'm going to just keep the lid off this thing and continue to allow for the uh, the fan to keep hitting this to help with the evaporation process. I guess the other nice thing of this is that in the past I had gone right down to the bottom and I was able to see little pooling of moisture at the bottom which if we do it now you can see it's quite dry now so the um, the moisture that was in the bin which was actually enough to cause pooling at the bottom is now kind of mixed into the material and is throughout the material but I think by by it being that way I think it's going to help with the ongoing drying of the contents of this bin all right very nice so I'm going to attempt to stir things in a way that I can level things off now and get this thing back up on the shelf so we could check on that last of our 22s I think that will do let's go get that last bin alright this one goes back to March 22 and in the case of this bin this bin and the one that we just checked in on have been managed in very similar ways for the past couple months. However, in the case of this bin, we do have perforations on the bottom of the bin. And for some time there was some dripping coming out. And for that reason, this material has always seemed to be just a little bit drier than the bin that we just checked in on. So this one might actually be making its way to the finish line a little bit more quickly. And it is the oldest of the bins that we just checked in on. So it's always interesting how this kind of leafy material, some of the bedding that you have in the bin sort of surfaces in a way. I'm not sure why that is. My hope is that the worms do eventually break it down, but I think to help with that we might just stir it into the material so that it's got an easier access. Ooh. Wow. Now, this might be a good bin for us to play around in when it comes to uh, cocoons. Because after I skimmed all of this stuff off the top, suddenly I'm seeing just cocoons all over the place. And it uh, might be tough to see on the camera. But they're, um, they're everywhere. I mean, I could see... I just saw three of them right there. There's another one. So a number of them over here too. But I don't think we're going to go crazy playing around with cocoons today. Maybe at some point in the future we will. And this might be a good bin to do that with. But I got a feeling that this bin might actually make it to the point where we, we can start to initiate the migration of the worms out of the casting soon. If the material looks like it's gotten to the point where the majority of the food in it has been broken down if it looks like the moisture has evaporated nicely then we might start trying to spur on their movement out of the castings so that we can get them migrated out of the container and pull their castings out and harvest it yeah you know it's it is a little bit damp but you could see how nicely it crumbles you know, here's an example of a little chunk of it that just doesn't crumble so much. So it's not perfect. But this is material coming right off the bottom where you would expect it to be the most damp and most sticky. And I think once we start stirring that more damp material from the very bottom with the more dry stuff on the very top surface, I think we'll end up with material that's a little bit drier throughout and a little bit closer to being finished. And here too, you know, I, I still see signs of these little tiny leaf stems, little sticks and stuff, but they're um, they're certainly not as plentiful as they are plentiful as they are uh, in the other container. So there's a lot of reasons why I believe that we might be ready to start migrating the worms out of this material soon. But since there is still scraps of the um, uneaten stuff in here little bits of bedding, little bits of leaves. I am just going to continue with the starving process. 
or fasting, I don't know what the better word is. Starving almost seems like cruelty. <laughs> But I don't see it that way because I still see plenty of edible material in here. Starving really just refers to the absence of feedings going forward. I don't think it uh, translates into worms having nothing to eat. Here too you can see that this bin is quite nicely populated. Many, many worms in here. And we're also quite close to the top edge of the container. So there's not a great deal of room in this container remaining. I think, you know, as time goes on, I should probably try to scatter some of this uneaten leafy stuff that we encountered at the very surface back into the material so that the worms can break it down easily. If it's right on the surface and there's like a, a breeze blowing across the top with the fan and there's dryness on the top, there's good reason to think that the worms aren't going to come for it. So I should really blend it into the material now as I'm stirring things around and trying to equalize the consistency of the material throughout the bin. But this material just looks so beautiful. Very nice castings. The one thing I do notice in my castings is a lot of little tiny white specks. And I believe that that's just the, uh, the grit that I use. I use pulverized eggshell as grit in my bins. And rather than risking the possibility of giving them too little, I do tend to be pretty generous with the grit lately. Maybe a few months ago or maybe a year ago I was still sort of stingy when it came to grit. But more recently I've been trying to remedy that and be a lot more generous when it comes to the application of grit. But if in the end it's this plentiful throughout the material, if pretty much anywhere you look you can find pieces of grit everywhere, then maybe I can scale back my application of grit a little bit if there's that much throughout the material. I mean, obviously in the beginning, it makes sense to be generous with it. But if as time goes on, the material still has this much of it scattered throughout it, then it might not be necessary to continue applying it in such great amounts as time goes on, as the bin gets more mature. So just from stirring a lot of this more dry stuff down into the more damp material, the dry stuff that was on the top surface, having it mixed more into the more damp stuff that we brought up from the bottom. It does seem like the material is almost perfect. I mean, I don't think it's overly damp at all anymore, even though it was pretty damp a couple weeks ago. I mean, it was so damp that it was just spewing water out of the drainage holes that the bin has at the bottom of it. This is one of the few bins of mine that has drainage holes at the bottom of it. Although most of them don't. So I had to set up catch trays underneath this one to catch all the fluid draining from it. But I believe that that did actually aid in preventing the material from getting overly damp by allowing the moisture to escape through the bottom rather than pooling up and dampening the material in the bin excessively. This is a nicely populated bin too. All of my bins lately have been pretty heavily populated. That's kind of been my theme in all of my bins lately. It's almost like I've been overloading them with worms. But I've never seen any sort of a negative effect of that. It just seems like the bin turns around its contents quickly, breaks it down into castings nice and fast. The worms seem to continue to reproduce pretty readily, regardless of the fact that there's lots of them. Because you always hear an overpopulation of worms in a given space um, would cause the worms to stop reproducing in an effort for them to try to control their numbers. Maybe because of the sense that there's 
an absence of space or an absence of food or something, but um, but I guess as long as I'm continuing to give them a cozy place to be, they just keep on breeding and multiplying. And I think that's why we saw so many uh, cocoons in the material early on. You know, if I continue to see the material dry this way and become nice and flaky throughout, I might actually restore the plastic coverings on this one so as not to let the material become too dry. And I believe at some point soon it is going to be time to try migrating these worms out of the material somehow. I have actually considered maybe using the light harvesting method as opposed to trying to migrate them horizontally. So it's still undecided how I'm going to harvest this container. Light harvesting is quick. It gets the job done in a day. Whereas migrating the worms out of the material slowly over the course of weeks takes a, a great deal of time. And the main difference is that, you know, you're letting the worms do the work, but you're sacrificing a fair bit of time by doing that. So, um, so I don't know. We'll just have to see. But I definitely like how all these bins are coming along. Yeah, but with that, I believe we're done here. This was my goal for the day, was just to get that newest of my bins fed. Make sure it's not going to get hungry with all those worms in there. A lot of mouths to feed. And then these two bins, having been not fed for two weeks, I was definitely curious to see how they're coming along to see if I can, in fact, start considering the material in these bins as done. And I think this one's getting very close. So, you know, before I move on to the cleaning up and putting away, let me just take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for sticking around and watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then, you know, please remember to give me a quick thumbs up. That's really appreciated. Also, consider subscribing to the channel as well. That's really appreciated, too. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.